final one, Mark 12, verses 1 to 10. Even though it goes all the way to 12, we'll read it to 10. Mark 12, verses 1. You know what? Mark 12, verses 1 to 9. Mark 12, verses 1 to 9. It goes to the 12, but we're going to read Mark 12, verses 1 to 9. Mark 12, verses 1 to 9. Now read this with me, folks, and I'm going to unpack it. Using the parables to show how Jesus claims to be God in the flesh, distinct from the Father in person, yet one with the Father in essence, the divine Son of God. Mark 12, verses 1 to 9. Okay, let's read. And he began to speak unto them by parables, Jesus speaking. A certain man planted a vineyard and set a, set a hedge about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. So a man <clears throat> planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, and hired tenants, vineyards, people to, to tend to it and watch over it. Husbandman means tenants, people to manage it and watch over it. Now notice verse 2, folks. And at the season, he, he sent to the husbandmen, the tenants, a servant, pay attention, a servant, that he might receive from the husband of the fruit of the vineyard, his portion, his share. And they caught him and beat him. So they beat the servant and sent him away empty. And again, he sent unto them another servant. And at him, they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. <clears throat> and again, he sent unto them another servant. And at him, they cast stones, okay? Wounded head, sent him away shamefully handled, right? Okay, now watch five. And again, he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some. Now watch here. Mark 12, 6 to 8 is the key, but watch here. Watch here. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, they will reverence my son. So notice now. He is going to send one final person. This is their last chance of doing right. This is it. This is your last chance, your last hope. One final person, but the one he sends finally is not a servant. It's his beloved son, the son of his love, the son of his heart, the son that he adores. Let me read six again. Having yet therefore one son, only one son, he's unique, his well-beloved, the one he loves and adores. He sent him also last. This is their last chance. That's it. Saying they will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, this is the heir. So this son of his, whom he loves and adores, is the heir. He owns everything that the owner possesses. He's the heir of the owner. Whatever the owner possesses, he owns it. Don't forget that point. This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others. Now let's break down the implication of this. We're not going to look at this passage, but I want you to read it on your own leisure. Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 7. Don't quote it. Isaiah 5, 1 to 7 tells us that the vineyard is Israel. There it tells us what the vineyard is Israel and the inhabitants of Israel. So number one, the vineyard is the land of Israel and its inhabitants. The husbandmen, the tenants, are the religious authorities. The religious authorities, the rulers, the religious establishment. Who are the servants? Let's go to Jeremiah 7, verse 25. Let's see. I'm going to write down the verses, but we're not going to look at all of them. Jeremiah 7, verse 25. 26, verse 5. 29, 19. And 44, verse 4. We're just going to look at Jeremiah 7, 25. But you guys can write down the references. Right? Jeremiah 7, 25. M's, Ms. SVPI, that's who Jesus is. He's the very heart of the Father. The very heart of the Father. The son of his heart, the son of his love. Who the Father loves and adores with the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah 7.25, that's who Jesus Christ our Lord is. Jeremiah 7.25, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets. You see who the servants are, folks? Daily rising up early and sending them. Did you catch it? The servants are the prophets. Catch it. Jeremiah 7, 25. Revelation 11, 18. Revelation 11, 18. The servants are the prophets. 
Revelation 11, 18. We're almost done. Revelation 11, verse 18. Exactly J17. Is Revelation 11, 18? Watch what happens here. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Did you catch it? Who are the servants? The prophets of God. So let's break down the parable. The owner is God. The vineyard is Israel and its inhabitants. The tenants, the husbandmen, are the religious authorities, the rulers. The servants are the prophets. But guess who Jesus claimed to be? Let's look at Mark 12, 6 to 7 again. Notice who Jesus claimed to be. Mark 12, 6 to 7. Let's catch who Jesus just claimed to be because Jesus is telling this parable. He's the one telling this parable and he's identifying himself. Right? Mark 12, 6 to 7. Watch here. One more time. Who is Jesus? Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Did you catch who Jesus claimed to be? He is not a servant, but he is the beloved son of the owner and the heir. So you see where Jesus just placed himself? The servants are the prophets. I'm not among them. I'm greater than them, higher than them, better than them. Unlike the prophets who are servants, I am the son of God, the son of his heart, his beloved son, whom he loves and adores, and I am the heir of God. You know what he just claimed to be? The son who owns everything that belongs to God. Now, let me break that down. Since the servants are the prophets and they belong to God, and Jesus is the son who's the heir, that means Jesus just claimed to be the owner of the prophets, the Lord of the prophets. The prophets belong to him because if they're servants of God the Father and Jesus is the son of the Father who's the heir, who owns everything that God owns, that means he owns the prophets. The pro prophets belong to him, are subject to him. <clears throat> they are his servants. He is their Lord. Hold on, but God also owns Israel and the inhabitants of Israel. But Jesus is the son of his heart, his beloved son, who is the heir of the father. So God owns Israel and its inhabitants, and Jesus is the heir. That means Jesus also owns Israel and all who live in Israel. It all belongs to him. But wait, God doesn't just own Israel. He owns all creation. He owns all creation. So if Jesus is the heir to God, and he owns whatever God owns and possesses whatever God possesses, if God possesses the entire creation and Jesus is the heir to God, that means Jesus owns all creation and everything in it. So he's greater than creation, distinct from creation, and one with the Father in glory, power, and essence. That's who Jesus just claimed to be in that parable. That's who Jesus just claimed to be in that parable. Did you catch it? You see how much meat there is in the parables of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? He says things in those parables that show that Christ believed and affirmed and proved by his miracles at resurrection that he's more than a man. He's God in the flesh, the divine, unique son of God, the very heart of the father, who's one with the father in essence, nature and glory, but distinct from him in person. That's who Jesus claims to be in these parables.